Hi and welcome back to HowToAV.TV. We're over in a not very sunny Amsterdam for ISE 2017 with Rich Green of Rich Green Design who has just delivered all those secrets coming out of Silicon Valley <laughs> that now you're going to find out about too. So Rich, how was the seminar first of all? First man to go on the, uh, on the stage. It was awesome, awesome. We had standing room only. It was, uh, it was a sellout crowd. Um, I'm very excited about sharing my discoveries from Silicon Valley with our group here. What's big in Silicon Valley right now? Where's the big money? Where's the talent being absorbed? It's all about artificial intelligence. It's about virtual reality. In a sense, those are the two end games of, of technology and of our industry. And when you look at the power of artificial intelligence and what happens when you bring that into the home, you start to see a trend toward what I'm calling invisible computing, where the devices themselves, the touch panels, the keypads, the remote controls, the stuff that you've got to touch to get things done, kind of disappear. We want them to disappear. We want that stuff to go away mm. so that our lives just unfold with this sense of grace and technology is there to support. So there are, there are developments in what are called anticipatory algorithms and predictive analytics. And those are enabled by companies like Amazon and Google and Apple who are watching you. So there's a surveillance economy of, that's powered by big data and artificial intelligence that kind of looks at the context of your life and then it anticipates your needs. So the lights come on when you want them to come on, you don't have to press a button and so on. So I think we can leverage the, uh, the scary big data technologies that are coming from these companies into the design work that we do for families in their homes. I think I'm very optimistic about what artificial intelligence brings to our industry and I think that we need to be aware of the fact that even though it's fueled by the need for personal data and targeted advertising and, and so on, we can use those techniques, we can leverage those techniques into our designs. I'm a big fan of Amazon Echo with the Alexa, I'm a big fan of Google Home and I'm a big fan of what's coming from NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA, Jensen Wong, the founder of NVIDIA, did the big keynote at CES mm -hmm. this year. And NVIDIA is launching through their little 4K streaming box, it's called The Shield. That becomes a smart home hub, and it's going to communicate with little spheres, they look like tennis balls, called the spot. And you just plug it into a power outlet, it's a far field beam forming microphone that is, creates a, a Wi-Fi mesh network. You put these little microphones, plug them into outlets all over the house, the whole house becomes an Amazon Alexa, right? You just walk around. Now his ties into Google Assistant. It's the first Google Assistant to work on non-Google hardware. This is a big deal. We need to embrace these technologies. Are we gonna make money selling NVIDIA shields and spots? No, you know, you're gonna make 30 cents, who cares? The point is you leverage this technology into a gracious design for families to enhance their lives, to help them get the job done. And I think that's important, Rich. So it's coming, so it's, it's already here and it's coming more and we need to start leveraging it. What are the skills or what do we need to consider for the future then as an integrator, as a home designer? What have we got to start doing as integrators to make sure that we're ready and that we're benefiting from it? Absolutely. From that's the question. That's how do we do this? I think the key is design. I like to say that design is Cedia's middle name, you know, custom design, custom electronic design and installation association. Design is the most important thing that we do. And what is design? Design is getting into the mind and the feeling to empathize with the families that we serve. We need to become more like anthropologists than technologists. Once you cross that chasm, once you get into that realm of you're really taking care of people by understanding them, then you can apply technology, you can apply all manner of, of, of technical improvements right to their home, but it's not about the hardware anymore. It's about how you integrate mm -hmm. these with these families' lives. So I think the most important thing we do is develop our design skills, and, and we're doing that at this show with our design thinking workshop. Indeed. And, and what about for the com commercial market? How, how is this going to get applied to commercial and to professional installations, do you think? 
Oh, commercial is, is hugely, uh, a huge opportunity. I do commercial work as well. Mostly boardrooms, presentation systems, video conferencing systems. Uh, so I just finished my first hands-free huddle room. Uh, I'm very proud of this in Palo Alto, where you walk into the room, the room knows that you're there, the display wakes up, it defaults to the Apple TV, so you can do an AirPlay display mirror to the TV. The moment you plug in your laptop with video sensing, it switches the input for you. And the moment you plug in a USB cable, it switches on the video conferencing system and you're doing a Skype session. You haven't touched a single button. There's no keypad or touch mm -hmm. panel in this huddle room. And I think that's where technology is going. You want invisible design. Things just happen naturally, unfold naturally as they should. That is a design challenge, by the way. It wasn't easy to design a hands-free huddle room. That took some time. It was expensive. I had to do some research. I had to get products. I got deep into the silicon level of the manufacturer I was working with because we were discovering things they didn't even know their product could do, right? So it, it's, it's important work. And we have to be mindful that, you know, we, we have to pay attention to the subtleties of the electronics behind it so that it just works seamlessly for the client. So I think there's huge opportunities for huddle rooms, for community, for uh, socialization at the, at the commercial level and to take technology, make it invisible, make it recede into the background so things just happen naturally. That's where the future's at. What about the show this year? Are, are there any things that you're looking forward to taking a look at, Rich? Absolutely. I actually, I'm looking for virtual reality. I'm looking for head, head mounted displays. But the most intriguing thing to me, and I think we're going to see some of this out on the show floor here, is um, room scale virtual reality. Once you can take the head-mounted display off, you get into these special rooms, that's where we come in. That's the next million dollar room. Okay, so what's the technology that's gonna get rid of those headsets then and make sure that VR still works? Video wallpaper. Um, LG showed uh, video wallpaper at CES this year. The Sony Cletus, C-L-E-D-I-S, the 32 feet by nine feet, 8K by 2K display that they had was phenomenal, and like HDR quality video. You can put that into a room. Every surface of the room, every wall, the ceiling, the floor can be that kind of video. Once you do that, with you've got with motion, position, and head tracking, and voice and natural user interface, gesturing and pointing, you start to interact with the room in a virtual space. It's a holodeck. How, how far is the holodeck, like from Star Trek? I think it's at the scale of what you see at a show like this, it's within five years. What we can deploy at a reasonable cost in a customer's home or office, five to ten years. They're going to be million dollar rooms. They're going to be phenomenal. We're going to see that stuff. We're going to see the pieces of room scale virtual reality at this show. Probably the first time we've been able to see these parts come together. I'm very, very excited. This replaces, to a large extent, home theater. The passive viewing experience becomes a stand-up-and-fight interactive experience within the room. And it works not just for entertainment and gaming, but it's training, it's education, it's kids floating down the Nile River 6,000 years ago. It, there's a depth to the education component of this that we've barely scratched the surface of. And I know there's going to be a lot of education tech down here. I want to see how they're embracing virtual reality for training kids, for helping kids understand that there's a bigger world. If you're at the show, make sure that you catch all of that CD of training that you possibly can. It is invaluable. Rich, great to see you. Thank you for your time. Join us again soon at howtoav.tv.